On this episode, we reveal all of our eight projects, Mike gets some new wheels for his new car, and we start a world first simulator project. Let's get it! What's up guys and welcome to a brand new episode of the Drift Games vlog. We're in the M4, Josh is with me. It's a very special episode because we're essentially going to be showing you all of the projects we're going to be working on in the next two months. It's the busiest and most ambitious season we've ever had. So we want to keep you guys along for the ride. I know the vlog has been a little bit random up to now because we're doing a lot of random stuff. But this is going to get you caught right up on what the plans are for the year. A lot of surprises in store. So we're going to head to Wayne and Current Motorsport first to check out the first batch of projects that are sitting there waiting for us at the moment and it's pretty exciting times okay so current motorsport is a flurry of activity right now because so much has landed in while we've been away in the Middle East that we're not even sure we got to unbox it get some of it on the car show you guys the projects that are getting done in the next couple of months so we'll start off with project number one which isn't even my car but it's actually Mike Leeson's 350Z which he picked up last week and obviously we have tons of 350Z's in the drift games experience Mike is in charge of that particular area of our business he loves these things because they get driven by so many people every day. They're very reliable. They've got a 3.5 V6, very good starter car. And this is essentially a road car. So we're going to do something to it today and a little bit later, but we want to talk to Mike about the car and sort of the project going up. Mike, they're finally not the BMW. I know. You won. I'm actually I won. Pink. No offense to BMW people, but they're just very hard to make look very pretty without spending a fortune's worth of money. Yeah. Also, we wanted to have kind of a little jack fleet, a little jack for, fleet. Our, for our trains at the bashes. It's also Josh's car got very cool recently, so very I fast. can't let him get ahead of me. But I'm right. saying my, power now. My car got made like that, and then now you've got this I'm one. I'm so jealous. I was like, there's no way he's going to have a nicer car. So talk us through. You picked up the car. It's pretty much a road car. It's a standard road car. It still has tests. It's just there's no tax. That's the reason it was cheap. So it's got the front lip. It's got the skirts. Yeah, it's got it the rear extensions. The roof is black. So it's just a standard road car. So project number one, yep. which we'll write down here here is Mike's 350Z which has taken it from a road car to a practice day car. Practice day car. car. So we're gonna have a couple of videos on this and what's being done. The plan Mike is handbrake, weld the diff, lock it, kite overs, bucket seats, harnesses, bash. Nice, nice. And uh, some wheels. Some wheels. You need to put wheels on your car, tasty wheels. So today we might actually put some tasty wheels on this car which we've been kind of left in the side at the moment. And the reason they've been left in the side is because we've got a brand new sponsor which I'm very, very excited about. 59 Degrees North Wheels, one of the hottest wheels on the market right now, have come on board with me this year. I looked at their wheels, I loved all the styles they were doing. They had a couple of styles that I thought would really suit my cars. So what we did was we had a chat with them. We came up with a really good deal where I'm going to be an official ambassador for 59 Degree North Wheels this year. And we have two amazing sets of wheels, so they're for two cars. So let's move on to project number two. Okay, so you guys, have, if you haven't checked out the previous videos of the Bash car, go back and check them out, because that'll make a lot more sense. We did a ton of work to the car. It didn't work out for us at the Bash, because the head went on the car. Turns out the head is warped, so that's now off getting machined in track day performance. You get a brand new head on the car. So the car is here, but I know what you're looking at straight away is the new wheels on this car. We mentioned from 59 degrees north, these are one of the hottest wheels out there. I saw this, these wheels last year on Tor Arne Cavilla's car in Drift Masters. They are the ultimate in bling, as you can see. So these are like a proper gold chrome, which is very difficult to find a wheel. I wanted this car to be as mad as possible, and right now I think it is looking a bit mad. We've only got the front side at the moment. I'm really excited to see the rears because they're a huge offset, huge dish for a mid-ranged wheel. They're very reasonably priced. Other than that, we're going to put the rear wheels on the car now. I'm going to show you guys how insane this looks now. Do you like the wheels? Do you like the wheels? I love the wheels. It's like a fade, right? It's like a kind of a nice. chrome to gold fade. You know what it reminds me of? You know Hertz car from Hoonigan? Yes. He has the bright gold wheels. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of the inspiration behind these. So I think these are gonna look definitely mad. They just look totally different than it did before. So I look forward to it. How many you got that? <laughs> nearly, nearly dropped the wheel. So let's get them on the car and see yeah. what they look like. I'm just gonna leave it to Wayne now. Yeah. Leave them to Wayne. Wayne not gonna yeah. the wheels anymore now. So we've just fitted the new wheels on the car. Look at this. Look at the dish on the back. The stance is perfect. We wound it back a little bit from where we started because we couldn't even get on or off the trailer, but it's still perfectly in line with the arch that's come on. 11 J's on the rear. They make a big difference, like the really, it really pops. Yeah. With the orange, it really pops. Yeah. So this is project number two. 
which as we mentioned needs now a head. It's got its 59 degree north wheels on there. Check out their website. Their wheels are just going to take over this year I think because they're coming out with stuff that no one else sees. The car is now bling-tastic, which I really, really like. We obviously have some graphics to change on this for different uh, partners that have come on board this year. But one of the big things is we'll be running these tires from the tirebox.ie. This is kind of the go-to place now for track day tires in Ireland, especially for road tires if you're doing practice days. Sean and the guys there do deals that no one else is. And put running a 265 road tire on the back of this, which is basically designed for long lasting. So you get loads of laps on the track without having to keep coming in and changing and changing and changing. So I'm dying to go out and test these now. So shout out to the guys at tirebox.ie. Make sure you check out their website. They will not be beaten on price, especially for drift stuff in Ireland. So project number two is on its way to being finished. But project number one, which is your car. My car, which is weird to say. You know what, Mikey? I'm just thinking, we've just taken off the wheels off this because I wanted to go for super bling wheels. Yes. And we now have a set of wheels that doesn't really have a home. Have the same so, fitment that I need. Same fitment, 5 by 4 So what we could do is put them on your car and then you could have them as a loan. A loan, like. Which I know you're never going to give back to me, ever. <laughs> ever. But it's one of them loans that I can't But I want to see what feet. your car looks like with, with some nice wheels yeah. on it. It's just looking a bit sorry for itself on those standard wheels, in my opinion. So we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to do some wheels then on the 350. We've got some stuff to do on the M4, but we'll get that to a minute. We've got to go back to this today. car, which is project number three. My 4180SX from last year, which is now looking as sorry for itself as it ever has, yeah. Mike. It's probably the worst it's ever looked. It's the worst thing it's ever looked. Now we're about a couple of weeks from the start of yeah. the British Drift Championship. We're going to split duties this year between this and the Mustang, a little bit like last yeah. year, depending on the track. We're changing this quite dramatically. You'll notice that we got a brand new kit for the car from TH Components. Different style than what we had before. Me look I different. didn't want both cars to look the same and then I kind of wanted to go a little bit more US low yeah. style on this car. So we've gone with sort of a BN style front bumper and body kit. We've got the wings to go back on the car. The wings are the only panel actually that are perfect. There's no dins, cracks, nothing on them. The wings are mint, they're ready to go back on. So I broke everything except the wings. Yes. Because we put the wings back on. As you can see, the back end is really where <laughs> This is where the problem starts. On the ground we have a full rear clamshell. So TH Components are now doing a full rear clamshell. As you can see, super light. It's got the whole back end of a 180SX there. Essentially means that you would say, why would you put a whole rear clamshell on the car, Dave? Well, have a look at the back end of the car from last year and you'll probably understand. It's like lent over, it's like it's collapsed over to one side. It doesn't anymore, that's the problem with it. So we're gonna put a full rear clamshell on the car and then we've got some uh, over fenders here, as you can see, we've got 50 mil over fenders on the back to go on top of those, on top of the clamshell. Just to give it more To give it a bit yeah. more width on the back. And we've got a 326 style rear spoiler, which is a totally different look. So it's got a car's got a look really low, really low spoiler. We had a very minimal lip last year, but we're going much madder with it this year. So that's aesthetically kind of what we're doing. The car is going to go back to similar livery it had last year with the blue and the purple, but we're going to obviously change it up a little bit for some new partners on board this year. So that's the aesthetics of the car, making it look as good as possible, which is kind of like a straightforward approach. What's not is what repair and damage we've done from, from the track days. So we obviously broke the gearbox. We had an RB25 gearbox in there. We broke it into smithereens. <laughs> It might be a little overkill for this car because it is going to run about 400 horsepower SR20. But look what we got here. The shiniest of the shiniest. A full Samsona sequential gearbox for this car. The biggest problem I had last year with this car was it was laggy, but I was in a very long gear because I was afraid of breaking the gearbox. Now I'm going to run a short ratio with the Samsona's gearbox, allowing me to get through the gears much quicker, hopefully getting rid of some of the lag. Because if we got a smaller turbo, we would lose a little bit of power in the car. So I want to keep it with good it's power. A good powered car at the moment. Yeah, so, but I could always just, I was in second gear for I think most of the championship last year on a 3.7 rear differential. So we're going to run a stock 180 rear end yeah. because we're not pushing that much horsepower. But I'm really, really important to see if the Samsonis alone makes me more competitive. I say it will. Just it's easier for changing gears. You and you can it. actually, you know, sometimes you know the way you clutch just to avoid changing gears. Yeah. Where this is just. So coming up on project number three is a full fitment of the Samsonas, testing it out on the track, seeing how it's going, and the full aesthetic finish on the car. We've got a couple of weeks to get that done, so. I'm excited for this one. This one is gonna be yeah, exciting, because we love nice. this car, but yeah. now we've got the proper look, and we're gonna have the proper mechanical feel, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. But before we get on to project number four, we'll go back to one. I think we should put some wheels on Mike's car and just see how that looks, so we get a little bit of a taste of how this thing is gonna be transformed with the coilovers and the lock kit and everything else. The 
have a good set of wheels. I'm in love. It's oh, good no. to see the potential of it though. Like you need to go low. Oh no, definitely. High overs and easy sitting. I'm not a big fan of these low cars, but I do agree it needs to happen. The idea is that this is going to look very similar to the rest of the cars. Yeah. Then we'll have, hopefully by the May bash, yeah. all four cars lined up in a garage, which yeah. will just be like a lot of work has gone into that. We can stand back and go, wow, we got we all We can actually stand back and have fun and just go twinning together because we all have eaten. We, we have, have to get a, power now. We want, yeah, we want a photo now yeah. of all, all four us. cars door to door. That's the that's that's a disaster waiting to happen. That's definitely <laughs> so. And then, then the they'll all be back in here going, well, we've got to fix this. Yeah. We've got to fix that. <laughs> We're cutting the quarters yeah. out, putting the kit well, in. We'll do one of those. Do you know what we'll do? We'll park them on a corner just to for and just Photoshop in some smoke and then it'll be cars. Adam's Perfect. the king of Photoshop, he can do that handy. Like. Right, so with the 350 now, we've got some wheels done. We, we've got work to do. It's Thank you for that, Dave. Appreciate no it. Problem. But today we are going to do kind of a finished project, yeah. which is project number four. Five. Four, project number four, which is actually the M4, which is outside. So we're going to bring the M4 in. We're doing a couple of bits to that now. We're actually transforming that pretty much. It's not going to be transformed a whole lot more than what we're doing today. So let's get it in here and get working. Okay, so project number four is the M4 competition pack, which I picked up a couple of weeks ago. You can go back and check out that episode. We had so much fun filming that. It's definitely one of my favorite episodes we've got on this series so far. So today, it's minor aesthetic changes. We're gonna put a front lip on it. We've got a Vorsteiner front lip for the car in carbon fiber. We've also got underskirts for the side. So not huge changes, but for the car, it's kind of pretty much perfect as it is. This is just to make it look a little bit more aggressive. We're gonna try and get on the car before we head off to see the rest of the projects today. Look at that, Wayne. You have to put carbon fiber on it because there's so much carbon on the car. Look at that! Sweet, look. So basically, I'm not, not only am I not allowed near power tools, I shouldn't be allowed near tools at all because opening a box, I even cut myself. So this is how unqualified Girly I am. Girly hands, that's the problem. It's a knife, Mike! <laughs> Girly <laughs> hands. I absolutely love how the M4 has come out. The front lip has transformed. It's so much more aggressive at the front. I was a little bit afraid it was going to be too aggressive in the lip, but I think it actually suits the car perfect. We have loads more to show you in this video, so it's time to hop in the car, head to Mondello Park, and show you the next stage of our crazy projects for March. So we shot off pretty quickly from Wayne's there. We didn't actually get a chance to see how the M4 looks. And the sun is going down, so I'm going to park up here and pull into a farm or something nearby here just to get a couple of shots for you guys of how the lip and the skirts have transformed the car. Okay, so we're on the road to Mandelo Park. The boys are hard at work today. Me and Josh are on a day off, so we're just gonna call in, see what they're up to. We're also gonna show you one of the secret projects we haven't told anyone about, and it may be a world first. So, on to Mandelo. We have lots more projects to show you in just a couple of seconds time, but we wanna take a minute just to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, M-Tech Brakes. They're one of the UK's leading supplier of performance brake pads, discs, and hoses. We have run them on all of our cars. They're an amazing product and at an amazing price. So make sure you check out their full range at mtechbrakes.com. So, a lot of stuff has arrived while we were away in the Middle East. I know something very special is in the office. I'm going to go and see what the boys have for another project that we're starting very soon. The boys are working hard. We're running around looking at projects today, but we have something special here, which is for project number five, the Chevy Caprice, which we showed you on our last episode. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. This is one where we went to a Tokyo style garage in Ireland, which is down Moorheads. The car is still in Moorhead Motors. We're not going there today, but we did get one of the most important components of that build into the office a couple of days ago, which is the air suspension kit from the States. So we're going to open it up, make sure everything's in there, show you guys what an air suspension kit for an 84 Chevy Caprice looks like. They have a specific kit for it. We're going to open up and see what's in it, and then we'll bring this down to Moorhead Motors very soon, where Dan's going to start fitting it. So I'm not sure what's in the kit. It said it had a full complete system. Smooth unboxing. No, it's not. Always very smooth unboxing. I should just cut everything. Okay, so we got stuff. See, so you actually gonna know what any of this stuff is? No. <laughs> this is compressor parts. Some <coughs> mounts. <laughs> These are mounts for the struts, I presume. They go on to the chassis. Let's hope there's four of them. They're different sizes. <laughs> Why is the one small one? I don't know. Does anyone know? Answer's on a postcard. This is the switch to make it go up and down. The air is in post. 
you know when you start filming something and something happens that you weren't exactly planning? Um, this has my name personalised on it. David's <laughs> Nutsack. <laughs> Perfect. Have you got David's Nutsack in your hand? I do. <laughs> Care careful with that now, that is my Nutsack, Keen, and I wouldn't like you holding it for too long. You didn't turn it over and find a joke on the back though, like a penguin bar. Yeah, it says, how do you catch a squirrel? It says, climb up a tree and act like a nut. <laughs> Right. And it's a handful of nuts. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. And that is the air tank. So this is apparently all the pieces you need to put air suspension into an 84 Chevy Capri. So that's project number five. Not sure what any of it does, but we're going to bring it down to Dan Moorhead in the next couple of episodes. But that Capri is going airbags, getting a new paint job, it's getting new wheels. So. Let's hope all that comes together as a pretty cool project. The next thing to do is head to the garage for probably the most exciting project, which is project number six. All right guys, very exciting project number six. This might be the one we're most excited about because it's never been done before, as far as we know. We are now getting a little bit more into our simulator game. We love it, online simulator stuff. It's great for learning how to drift. It's great for having a bit of twin battle practice without having to wreck your cars. So we got a really crazy idea and it involves these things. Yes, that is correct. We have purchased some old school arcade machines. I mean, honestly, in Ireland, in a shed, we found not only these two. I've barely seen that game in an arcade, never alone to buy. <laughs> they don't work. They were abandoned for quite some time. Then we got a little bit of a brainwave and said, would it be possible to retrofit a full on professional simulator into an arcade machine? Now, we got in touch with the guys at Fanatec and they love the idea. I don't think it's been done before anywhere in the world. So the idea is, for these machines, is to actually fit the full Fanatec range into it. So it looks like an arcade machine, but it actually plays like a proper top of the range simulator. So we're gonna try and replace the screen, replace the speakers, replace the lights, upgrade everything on all the machines, and we're building three of them. One of them is gonna be used in the office as a fun one. The next one we're gonna put into my house, and the third one, we might just be giving that away to some of our Drift Games Vlog fans, but more on that later. This is just a little sneak peek of what's about to go down in the next couple of weeks. This will happen really fast, this project, because we're waiting for the stuff to arrive from Fanatec. Then we're starting to tear them down. There's a lot of wiring, fabrication, restoration that needs to go into these, but I think this is probably one of the coolest ideas we have. We hope you guys like it, and we're along for the ride in the next couple of videos. So that is project number six, and we have one more project left, which is, of course, your car, Mr. Holsworth. But it's down in Motorsport 56. We're gonna hop in the M4, head down the motorway, catch up with Bob and the guys and see what's going on with the MX-5 ahead of its debut in the Irish Drift Series. We're now at Motorsport 56. We're gonna talk about another two projects. Now, one of them is not here. I just gotta bring it up because you guys will be saying, wait, where did the Mobile One Mustang go? That is project number seven. It's not here because it was in the UK. We had it doing some promotional work for the Canon Run, which we're on later in the year, and it was at Auto Sports. So it hasn't arrived back yet, so we'll have a little bit more video content on that coming up very soon with some changes to the car ahead of the season. We can't show you that on this one, but just remember the Mustang. If you don't remember what it is, this is what it looks like. So that's the Mobile One Mustang. Now we're down here talking about Josh's MX-5 where in a previous episode, you guys would have checked out that we did up Josh's car while he was away. Kind of a prank, maybe a prank. Kind of a cool thing to do for your Best friend. prank I've ever known. It's a good prank. <laughs> but he didn't even actually, he's probably one of the few drivers in Ireland or the UK or anywhere in the world that is looking forward to a season he didn't know he was competing in. So we're now gonna build a car. Basically, we've done the aesthetics to it and we put a cage in it, but we've got to build the car at actual competition spec, which is why we brought it down here to the guys in Motorsport 56. So Josh, I think it's probably best for you to talk to Bob and him to break all this news to you than me to get involved. It's literally just gonna be Bob having a go at me now because this is, you know all that stuff you bodged over the last couple of years? It's all, yeah, it's come, all come back to bite me and apparently it's like a ticking time bomb. Well, it still looks good. I mean, we'll give it that. There you go. Bit of a high five. <laughs> Come on, let's go over and have a look at this stupid yeah, little car. He's bodged a lot, he's got a lot of favours done. This car has been built on favours. A lot of people don't like you. That's <laughs> <laughs> always right. Is it a miracle that it ran? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say it's just pure luck is what that is. <laughs> right, let's talk through it. So Yeah, the wiring was all bad. We stripped all the wiring out of it. 
clean the engine bay. It's all clean, Josh. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen it this clean. We're gonna change the coil packs to Audi coil packs. You know, try to clean it up a bit more. Take some of the accessories on the engines that's not needed off. Just make it more reliable. Less stuff. Yeah, you know, you have idle air control valve. You know when it's cold and you crank it up and it just runs? Yeah. Well, now you're gonna have to make it run. What do you mean make Until it, it run? warms up. Well, I see front that sounds like a disadvantage, no, right? It's a, it's a race car. Yeah, but why are you taking that? What's the point? Maybe it's just one less thing to worry about. Okay. <laughs> He's just gonna nod there and go, absolutely. It's not that bad, trust me. Well, do you know what we should do now? We should go look at all the fancy link stuff that Link ECU sent you. Is all that here? I think yeah. that's here, yeah. Let's go it's check it out. The engine room, yeah. Let's see what we got. This is all the sensors. What? It's like all the things going into my car. That's your igniter pack. Those are plugs and pins. And then that's your, that's your ECU there. Should work perfect with your car. It has everything you need. Even matches, look, the purple. The purpley pink. It's like it's meant to be. <laughs> that's your intake air temperature. This is your uh, 100, I think it's 150 PSI pressure sensor for your oil. That's another pressure sensor so you know your fuel pressure. And then that's your boost solenoid. And then that's your going to be the water temp. Uh, that's your igniter for your coil packs. Very overwhelming yeah. with all yeah. this <laughs> so basically, basically with all the with all these sensors and stuff and with this Monsoon X and then the Steeda MX5 dash, you'll be able to monitor the full system of the car. Where's the dash? The dash is actually behind you. I was actually mocking up to make it fit. That's wow. Cool. I got you the street version because it has an oil pressure symbol light rather than just a red light. What are you trying to say? Right? Well, I'm just saying that I think if you had a red light, you wouldn't be able to determine exactly what the red light is. I wish I could. It's not really an insult. Well, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually even more of an insult in its own right. Essentially, we've now replaced the part of Josh's brain that won't fit or even look at it with a link system that will do the thinking for him. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. That seems like that seems like the right approach. Yeah. It's incredible. They're probably the best investment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thanks guys for showing us the parts of the MX-5 that are going to be going into it. Thank you, Lee ECU, for sending Josh enough that will replace his own brain in the car throughout the year. That is ideal. And yeah, we'll get this thing put back together. I'll get it done. What do we have? Like six months or something? <laughs> we got about six weeks. So, or six days actually. Six days usually. Yeah. That's probably more than most drifters do, so it's oh, not too bad. So there you have it guys, some amazing projects coming up over the next couple of weeks. We're gonna be really, really busy. We wanna know which is your favorite, which is your favorite project. All of these projects will be done and filmed as they go along for your viewing pleasure, but also because we like to hear your feedback. So if you hit the like button and the comment button, we really appreciate it. Anything you want us to do differently or change, we like hearing other people's opinions, so let us know in the comment section below.